And no, that is not my new nickname for this video. It is the final entry in Phase 2 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And it's about the plot of Ant-Man. Ha Dr. Hank Pym, played by the great Michael Douglas, recruits Scott Lang from jail, played by Paul Rudd, to be the next Ant-Man. And that's pretty much all I gotta say. I actually knew about the character Ant-Man before even heard here about this film being made. I, I knew about the character, but I wasn't really, like, interested in that much into the character. I mean, pfft. He shrinks and grows. That's pretty much all I know about the character. And really, after seeing this film, I am now a huge fan of Ant-Man. <laughs> I actually did really have a heck of a lot of fun with this movie. This is really one of the most entertaining Marvel films since Guardians of the Galaxy. And that's still my favorite Phase 2 film in the MCU. While this, it's really close. It's like, it's like really like close second. To be honest, at first, I don't think a concept as Ant-Man will work on the big screen because all he does is shrink and grow. I mean, something is so silly and ridiculous at that. I mean, I'll give that a pass because Ant-Man was a character from the 60s. But really, something like Ant-Man is like, how can they transition from that from comic to the big screen? And really, they pulled it off in this movie. Paul Rudd was surprisingly great as Scott Lang slash Ant-Man. When I first heard they cast him as Ant-Man, I'm like... Really? That guy from Clueless to play Ant-Man? Seriously? But really, he did a great job. And he kind of reminded me how Chris Pratt nailed the role as Star-Lord in Guardians of the Galaxy last year. The character as Ant-Man so bizarre and weird, something that could be on the big screen could never work back in like the late 90s or early 2000s like the Sam Raimi Spider-Man area era or whatever. But really, they actually did a great job in this film. And really, something like Ant-Man, like I said... Who, who would thought that that would work as a live-action movie? I bet some people thought, how could Spider-Man could work as a live-action film? And look how many freaking Spider-Man films we have now. Get rid of Buddha of the butt again. If I had a choice to watch either Avengers Age of Voltron or Ant-Man, I would choose Ant-Man over Avengers Age of Voltron because, unlike Ant-Man, Age of Ultron had a non very cohesive plot and very jumbled in a way, while Ant-Man had a very focused plot and really, really more entertaining, more fun to watch than Age of Ultron. Even though Age of Ultron is more bigger, more epic film, while Ant-Man is more fun and more entertaining. The action scenes in this film are one of the best parts of any Marvel film. I mean, the action films are so great and so visually stylized. I mean, also, I mean, of course it's a Marvel film because you don't know, get some big, epic action scene. But this is really, it's really cool. It's really cool to see. It's really cool to watch. And the 3D is also very great. And this movie is worth seeing in 3D. Unlike Avengers: Age of Ultron, which 3D in that film wasn't really all that good. So grainy, so dark. But really, the 3D and Ant-Man, that should be very fun to watch. For certain actors who were part of this film, I was concerned or whether he'd be good or bad. And with Michael Pena, who was freaking pretty hilarious in this film. As he laughed the entire time he was on the screen. And of course, another actor I thought was going to be terrible in this film was T.I. He was pretty funny too. Actually, this is one of the films I don't mind having a hip hop turn, turn um actor in this film. I mean, T.I. He was actually pretty funny in this film. I did like how they reminded you that this film was still part of the MCU with the cameo of Falcon and Scott Lang saying, "Why not be called the Avengers?" That was a fun little nod that they had in the film, and and the cameo of Falcon was also pretty funny as well. Ant Man kicking the Falcon's butt and him being a parrot that was hilarious. If there was one negative I could say about this film is that the villain Yellow Jacket. I thought it was very forced, very very not even even memorable. I I completely forgot about him after leaving the theater. I mean Yellow Jacket. I mean he's fine. He's not. He's kind of like come on, remind me of William Dafoe from the original Spider Man film. Which but he was, I gotta say, he is better than the Yellow Jacket in this film. But really, he, I think he's more like a cookie cutter, over the top villain, and just. Not, just so cliched. Very cliched. And very, very like, oh, I'm evil, I can be over the top. <laughs> Why am I acting like Turtle from Battlefield Earth? <laughs> Learn how to spell your name! I can rule the entire galaxy! Okay, that, that, okay, that just came out of nowhere. I apologize for that. And that's pretty much all I gotta say about Ant-Man. This is, like, another great addition to the Marvel Cinematic Universe that was very fun, very entertaining. I thought the villain could be done so much better than what we got in this film. But this film was really good. Of course, there are two after-credits scenes. This is just a Marvel film. You gotta stay after the credits. 
Every time I go to a Marvel film, when the credits roll, everybody gets up like, Do you know there's after credits scene in every Marvel film? I mean, after the Avengers, Captain America, Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, you still, like, go up and leave? Like, sit back down. Watch and credits say, Now, people. Now. I'm sick of your BS. I'm giving Ant-Man an A-. minus. Thank you so much for watching, guys. What do you think of Ant-Man in the comment section down below? And I'm done with more superhero films of this year. But I believe there's another one. It's about four people. And it's based on a Marvel comic. And it's something about film called Fantastic. Four? Or, or the... The four Fantastic? I don't know. But anyway, I'll look up to that film. But like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.